Hey, thank you for being a part of our study today. We're in chapter 12 of Isaiah. And chapter 12, let me just read it, and then we'll talk a bit about it. Uh, you'll say in that day, I'll give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger turned away and you comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might. He's become my salvation. This really picks up a theme of all that we've read, particularly from chapter 7 now and then on into up into chapter 30s. And that is, who are you going to trust? Are you going to trust yourself, your own ability, your own skills? Are you going to trust the nations around you? This would be speaking to the, the country. Are you going to trust the nations around you to provide security against warring in enemies? Or are you going to trust God? And Isaiah says in this song, I'm going to trust God. God is my salvation. And I can trust Him and not be afraid. That is so different from trusting my own skill and my own abilities. Rudy, why don't you talk some about that if you would. Uh, for me, the, the standout in those two verses is salvation. And right. the Hebrew word for salvation is Yeshua, which is Jesus' name. So without really, I, I can remember reading uh, the chapters of Isaiah that talk about Emmanuel, and it's like, why wasn't Jesus called Emmanuel instead right. of Yeshua? Right. Uh, because really they are titles. There are titles that only belong to him, King of Kings. Right. Uh, he is our salvation, uh, just I am, uh, the high priest. I mean, there, these titles belong only to him. So when I hear uh, the word salvation, I realize that it's describing one of his titles. Mm -hmm. And he is our salvation because without him, we would be in the second death, separated from him for eternity. Right, right, so true. You know, when I read Isaiah, and again, Rudy and I are just give you snippets of thought here. We could talk a lot further, and I hope you will read further. If you take in the whole message of Isaiah, particularly in these chapters, one of the big issues is, who am I going to trust? And uh, we're living in a time where we trust leaders and we trust our government and we trust maybe people like Rudy and me. Uh, we trust ourselves. And God is calling us to trust him for our day-to-day -day living. In the middle of armies breathing down the necks of the people of God back in Isaiah's day, Isaiah to declare, I trust in God. Now, obviously, Rudy hit on the deal, our eternal salvation. Obviously, you know, who are we going to trust? Jesus, the one who means God saves. Once we trust him, we're able to say, let's read verses 5 and 6. Sing praises to the Lord, because he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Talk a minute about that. Yeah, isn't that something? This passage, uh, it says the whole world. And therefore, when we're just thinking about Israel and the people that surround it, really God's context is the whole world. Right. But then he slips back into mentioning Zion. And Mount Zion uh, is where the Temple Mount is in Jerusalem. Uh, but you know, it wasn't just something picked by David uh, 3,000 years ago. It was picked by God mm -hmm. actually a thousand years before that mm -hmm. uh, because that is the place that God had Abraham walk with Isaac for three days to be sacrificed on Mount Zion. Right. God's fingerprint on Mount Zion has been there since the beginning. Yeah. And it really doesn't have anything to do with uh, the Jews are chosen or, or whatever. He has chosen this location for himself, for his own purposes. Ultimately, 
there was there was no other place that Jesus could have been crucified except in Jerusalem, which holds the story together. Yeah, so true. Just a couple little side notes. The first time the word worship is mentioned in the Bible, it was when Isaiah said to the men who are traveling with he and his son, we're going to go worship the Lord. So often we want to make worship something that makes me feel good. I'm going to sing some good songs. I'm going to have a nice prayer time. The first time of worship mentioned was it was sacrifice. Huge, faithful, faith living out sacrifice. Just another thought, that phrase, Holy One of Israel, Isaiah says that phrase over and over throughout his book. But he first said it when he met God in his vision, chapter 6. When, when we have an encounter with the true and living God that shakes our foundations, we begin to see him as holy. And he is the one that we then in turn can trust and say, God, you are my salvation. Yeah, amen. Thank God for that. Rudy, thank you so much for doing this with me. And thank you for being a part. God bless you. We'll be back tomorrow with chapter 13. You know, hold on. That's going to be quite a chapter. God bless you. Take care.